Mía. Les invitamos a seguir disfrutando de la buena programación de Nacional FM. Hasta luego. Los hechos informativos más relevantes de los últimos 60 minutos en el Boletín Informativo Nacional. Para consultas ciudadanas, contáctenos al WhatsApp 6949-1861 o síguenos en nuestras cuentas arroba nacional FM Panamá. Somos más noticias. El Pacto del Bicentenario es más participación, cerrando brechas. Es un proceso para que todos los ciudadanos propongamos soluciones a los problemas que afectan al país. Entre más propuestas, más soluciones. Tu opinión es importante, es nuestro futuro. Ingresando a agora.gov.pa ofreces propuestas para ser parte de la evolución por el Panamá que todos queremos. Pacto del Bicentenario, cerrando brechas. Ingresa y sé parte. Hay sucesos que solo ocurren una vez en la vida. Cuatro millones de panameños unidos cantaremos el himno nacional para recibir los 365 rumbo al Bicentenario de la Independencia de Panamá de España. Porque a las 12 medianoche, únete al Zoom más grande que se haya hecho en Panamá para verte en pantalla. Escríbenos al WhatsApp 6747-3593 para obtener el enlace al Zoom y ayúdanos a compartir el acontecimiento más emocionante del año. Este viernes 27 de noviembre, desde las 11 y 30 de la noche, invita la Comisión del Bicentenario de la Independencia de Panamá de España. Transmiten Telemetro, RPC, Medcongo, TVN, TV Max, TVN Paz, Nex, Ser TV y sus plataformas digitales Nacional FM y Crisol FM Hechos históricos de nuestro país La separación de Panamá de Colombia fue un hecho ocurrido el 3 de noviembre de 1903 después de la guerra de los mil días y que desencadenó la proclamación de la República de Panamá el Istmo de Panamá fue parte integral de toda la forma de organización política y territorial que tuvo la República de Colombia desde 1831 hasta 1903, con alrededor de 17 intentos de secesión y cuatro separaciones consumadas durante el siglo XIX. Noviembre, mes de la patria. El Sistema Estatal de Radio y Televisión te saluda. Nuestra identidad, lo que nos define como nación libre e independiente. Todo por la gloria panameña. Camino al Bicentenario. Nacional 101.7, Crisol 106.9 FM, Radio Nacional 840 AM, junto a CER TV y Meduca presentan Conéctate con la Estrella. Estamos comprometidos con la formación pedagógica de la niñez panameña. Hello everyone and welcome once again to our Friday classes. My name is teacher Jose Morillo and I'm very happy and excited to be here once again on Friday. So today we have, like as usual, we have great information and great topics. So I invite you to join our classes and participate as much as possible. My dear colleague. Hey, what's up? Today it's Friday. We're very happy to have you all here, especially those students joining for our beautiful nation, Panama. Whether guys you are on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, through WhatsApp, you guys are all welcome to participate. Today we have great topics. It will pay it off at the end of it. And then you will all enjoy this outstanding presentation we have prepared for you. I want you to do two things. Number one, grab your booklet, your notebook. And number two, find your pen and pencil to take some notes. Everything we're going to be uh, teaching here, it's vital. So I need you to be focused on each of the lessons that are going to be delivered and taught by the teachers who are very happy to be here. Uh, without any further ado, as we always do it on Fridays, we have an expert on the topic. She will be addressing a very interesting topic. So with you, Mrs. Fernandez, with her topic. Ok, bueno, muchas gracias a los teachers, contenta de estar compartiendo con ustedes el día de hoy, hoy viernes en víspera de nuestro 100, 
99 años de independencia de Panamá de España. Ahora bien, chicos, quiero compartir un poquito lo que hemos ido eh, viendo durante toda la semana, que hemos hablado un poco sobre resiliencia, pero el día de hoy quiero hablarlo enfocado ante los fenómenos naturales que de alguna forma han tocado nuestro país recientemente. Los cambios atípicos en el clima mundial pues han desatado la formación de huracanes cada vez más fuertes e intensos y la sociedad aún no se encuentra preparada para hacerle eh, frente a estas inundaciones de gran magnitud y nuestro país pues no se escapa de esa realidad. El tema de la resiliencia, que es esa capacidad de poder soportar, tolerar y hacerle eh, frente a situaciones difíciles y de vulnerabilidad, es un tema que es necesario tocarlo y asociarlo al tema del cambio climático. Y de hecho hay poblaciones, y, y en este caso también nuestras poblaciones eh, aborígenes o de grupos originarios, también son muy vulnerables a este tipo de situaciones y es por eso que es necesario fortalecer esa capacidad de eh, poder identificar, gestionar y reducir, o por qué no eliminar los riesgos que se puedan dar. Muchas veces se puede pensar que la reacción inicial ante situaciones perjudiciales o de peligro pueden ser negativas, o desadaptativas, pero es totalmente contrario. Esto que nos ha ocurrido recientemente en estas últimas semanas en nuestro país, también nos lleva a que las primeras reacciones también de las personas son de afrontamiento positivo, donde hay ayuda mutua, donde de hecho víctimas ayudan a otras víctimas, es decir, tienes daños, pero también te abocas a ayudar a otras personas y poder rescatar que de todas las cosas negativas que pueden pasar, tenemos que sacar el lado bueno. Y nuestro país ha mostrado ese tema de... de de poder dar cómo se abocó todo un país a poder establecer donaciones y a sensibilizarnos de la importancia que tenemos como seres humanos. Entonces tenemos que rescatar de cosas negativas, podemos sacar aspectos positivos. Continuamos con más. Well, thank you. Um, great information. I think we should always uh, listen and follow uh, those important advice. And uh, well, if you want to live better, for sure. So we continue today with our topic And our topic of today for seventh grade is, what is the topic, teacher? It is transportation. So to start this off, I would like to remind our dear audience that we do have a WhatsApp number where you guys can actually interact with us as well and send your messages. So the phone number is 6004-8182. Once again, 6004-8182. 6004-8182. This is the WhatsApp number. Guys, that you can interact with us, send your greetings, your answers as well from the class we're having and teaching today. Well, let's get started. I know, guys, you have been waiting for this moment, and we are here. Our topic is transportation. So let's focus on the objective for the class. Number one, you guys will be able to compare modern and past means of transportation number two you will be able to identify this means of transportation used in panama in our region success criteria is exactly the uh, achievement indicator that will tell you how well you are doing at the end of the class number one you can list means of transportation number two you can provide examples to people speaking and using the language about transportation and you will be able to make sentences in the simple present tense. So these are the objective and the success criteria for today's class. Now let's define the word transportation. For those students who are listening to me and then you guys are at home, think about a bicycle, think about a car, think about the bus. Think about even a horse, an animal, as a means of transportation. And I would like to explain that transportation is the movement of people, animals, and goods from one location to another. It gives people the opportunity to know other places, countries, nations, continents, and also cultures to get all the goods and services they need for the daily life so transportation is to move from one place if you're here then you move there from here there it means that you carry on heavy loads or good services and then that's how transportation could be defined today i have a good question for you guys and this question is for everyone that it's right now tuned in this class 
How do you get to school? How do you get to school? By the subway or by the well-known metro? By a metro bus, by a bicycle, by a car, by a boat, or by a horse? How do you get to school? So this question will prepare us for today's topic. And you can also tell us how do you guys get to work? How do you get to school? So when you run errands, what means of transportation are you guys using or riding or taking? So you can even tell us that information. Now, Teacher Jose, it's time for our segment, which is called Did You Know? So we're going to be presenting a very interesting fact today, and it's Did You Know? I would like to share the following information with you guys. And this is a well known called Metro, all right? I think everyone is, I mean, riding it and using it to go to work or school. Did you know that our Metro moves between 240 to 280 passengers? I mean, thousand passengers every day. I mean, this is massive, all right? So our uh, Metro is really helping people to get to your destination to get to your places. I have used it, I have taken the subway, and it's really worthy, you know, of, of taking it. I mean, you can get faster whenever you want to. Before I introduce the lesson with vocabulary and words, I invite Teacher Jose to start greeting those viewers that we have on Instagram because I have already greeted those through Crisol FM and National FM, but we need also those who are on WhatsApp or on Instagram. Correct. Yes, of course. We uh, and actually that's a really interesting fact. Uh, to forty thousand, two forty, right? To eighty thousand passengers. That's a lot of people. All right. So yeah, we have uh, the students joining our classes. Of course, we have Clarita, <coughs> uh, also Caitlin. This says uh, good afternoon, teachers. Good afternoon to you, and you know. Uh, JSL is waving a little hand, virtual hand. So, of course, they are connecting and learning with us. I'm so delighted that you guys are here sharing with, the, with us. And this is going to be a great time for you guys. Let us get started. Now, I'm going to introduce something that you have been waiting for. It's vocabulary. It's words that you can use. Let us repeat after me. Find a partner to work with. If you have a family member at home, a friend of yours, your cousin, your nephew, your auntie, if mama is at home so you can practice with her and also pronounce. So let's repeat after me. Number one, subway. Subway. Number two, goods. Goods. Number three, vehicle. Vehicle, it's number three. Number four, digital. Digital. Number five, this is a very well-known word in Panama. On my way coming back here, there was a lot of traffic. You know, was it, there was traffic jam. So word number five is traffic. Let me spell the word for you. T-R-A-F-F-I-C. Traffic. All right? That's the pronunciation of the word. Number six is population. Word number six is population. Allow me to break this word down for you guys. What does population mean? Population means when there are a lot of people in one place, when it's really crowded. And, and they, if you live in a community and your community is surrounded by many people, well, that's the population living in that particular region or community. Now, I think, I think it's time for us teacher to start practicing because our students are here for that and they need to put this uh, topic into practice and that's exactly what we're going to be doing now so let's observe we have a match and this match will help us to solve the match itself what do you have to do i know you know this activity first of all you have to match the letter with the number you could say that i have Five words. I got traffic, I got goods, population, vehicle, and subway. What you have to do is to uh, match the words. In the meantime, you guys are putting your thoughts together and your ideas. I would like to describe these images for those students who are listening to us through Nacional or Efe Crisol. 
the first picture we see a lot of cards in one area. We see um, cards there. Uh, in part B, we see a lot of people. What is that a lot of people? Traffic or population? Now, number th uh, three or letter C, we see the subway. All right, we see uh, the famous uh, metro. So which word is that? Traffic, vehicle, or subway? Letter D, we see a lot of cards. I mean, they cannot move. It's really heavy. What is that heavy? Cards cannot move. And number E, we, I see a lot of boxes together, like products. What would, what would that be? All right? I don't know if Teacher Jose has something to say there. In the meantime, I know you guys want to practice. Let's give it a chance, Teacher. Yes, um, we have Caitlin. Caitlin has um, helped. Has she has helped helped us answering all the quest, all the matching activity. So she says that uh, one is D. That's quite correct. Number one is letter D, yeah. and uh, number five is letter C. Correct. Number two is letter E. Number three is letter B. What a great job, man! And of course, number four. Is letter A. Outstanding. Congratulations. Was that that Caitlin? Yes, Caitlin. She did an outstanding job. Thank you, Caitlin, Wait, for helping Wait, let me add us. something else. Well, uh, sure. A, a comment from one, one of our students says, Some crowded places are dangerous about COVID spreads. For example, the metro. Yeah, it, you, you you are right on, on point with that comment. This was Jaisal. Jaisal, yeah, we try to avoid. Yeah, but that's a means of transportation we all use. And that's ex thank you, Jaisal, for that great comment. Now, let us uh, go through topic explanation. We need to define here. I would like to start this lesson, Teacher Jose, by explaining our students the difference between means of transportation and modes of transportation. There is a huge difference here, and I really want to explain that. So that's something that you will get with you. Modes of transportation, they are classified into three different categories. Number one, land. Number two, water. And number three, air. They are not means of transportation. They are modes of transportation. That's something that you gotta be clear. Now, when you speak about a car, a helicopter, an airplane, that's means of transportation, right? The vehicle that you're using to move or to go to different areas. Now, let us practice because we have a nice practice to get started. And I know our students are ready for that. Practice number one focuses on three different pictures. Picture one, we see an airplane. Picture number two, we see a car. And picture number three, we see a boat. The big one. And we have three choices there. Airplane, the mode, it would be air, land, or water. Number two, where the car is. So those students at home, in your notebook, try to draw a car. Draw a car. And tell me if the car is a mode of air, land, of water. A car. And number three, we have just one there. So our viewers can also uh, participate. Remember that we still have time to go through. And, and that's going to be fine. I have one more picture, which is four, five, and six. Four, five, and six, we do have the same practice, and we want you to participate. Picture number four, we see the subway. W what the mode the mode would be? Land, air, or water? Picture number five, there is a helicopter. Helicopter is a pronunciation. Air, land, or water? Uh, I have speedboat known as lancha, which is number six, speed boat. Would you say it's earth, land, or water? Which one would be? So let's see if we uh, you can participate and provide some answers. In the meantime, I will go through topic explanation, and we can compare here differences between all means of transportation and modern means of transportation. All right, Teacher Jose, before I move forward, I know you have something to say. Yeah, of course. We already have some answers from some of our students. They are kind of fighting to answer first, and that's really cool. Um, Caitlin says 1A. Correct. Um, Jason says 2B. That's 
great. Also, Caitlin says the same. And three is number C, letter C, I'm sorry. Exactly. Uh, number four is B, is that right? Uh, that's correct. And number five, A. Outstanding, number great. Number six, C. <laughs> Outstanding. I mean, these students are A+. Plus. I need to congratulate these people for that's right. providing their answers. Good. Great job. Topic great job. explanation. Let me just go briefly to that. Modern and old means of transportation. All their slowed, manual, less capacity, and uncomfortable. While modern means of transportation, they're fast. They're data, more capacity, and comfortable. Let us go to the Google Classroom password so you guys will have access to this presentation. It is 567M2KG. Once again, 5 six seven m two k g the password for google classroom well time is up for seventh graders we have finished what a great performance what an outstanding class congratulations seventh graders don't go away stay there we're going to be right back with eighth ninth 10 11 and 12th graders teacher jose thank you so much guys see you next friday bye bye <laughs> El futuro de la patria. Con la visión de fortalecer la participación de los padres de familia y los integrantes de la comunidad educativa escolar y regional, el Ministerio de Educación, en alianza con las emisoras comprometidos con la formación de todos los estudiantes a nivel nacional, ha creado el proyecto educativo Conéctate con la Estrella. Hoy vamos a hablar de la comunicación para sexto grado. Los números naturales son aquellos que nos permiten contar los elementos de un conjunto. Donde miles de niños y jóvenes se beneficiarán con las clases dictadas por profesores a través de la radio para estudiantes de primaria, premedia y media. Una alternativa educativa para los estudiantes que se encuentran en casa respetando la cuarentena por la pandemia del COVID-19. De esta manera, Meduca y estas emisoras garantizan que la educación no pare y que los estudiantes panameños no afecten su proceso de aprendizaje, llevando a los maestros hasta su hogar. Gracias a los 40 principales, Radio Panamá, Más Música, Radio Mía, RPC Radio, Telemetro Radio, Osana Capital, TVN Radio, Nacional, Crisol, Radio Hogar, Radio Católica, La Voz Sin Fronteras y Radio Mi Favorita. Hello to all our, our dear students. Thank you so much for joining our classes. And we welcome you to today's class, which is for eighth grade. We have a great topic, a lot of vocabulary, cool and fun activities, and of course, some English for you to learn today. So please join us, tell your friends, tell your family, whoever wants to join the class also, so they can practice and learn a little bit of English. Uh, my dear colleague, Hello, once again, we're just right back. I know you're there. Stay tuned. We have an outstanding topic. The instructor is ready to deliver. You only need to take notes and enjoy. Now we have Mrs. Fernandez with her topic. Muchas gracias a los teachers, José. Contenta de estar compartiendo con ustedes el día de hoy, viernes. Y bueno, chicos, como hemos ido viendo durante toda la semana, estamos viendo el tema de resiliencia en sus cápsulas psicoemocionales de Un Minuto para Ti. Y al día de hoy vamos a asociar la resiliencia ante los fenómenos naturales que, pues, de alguna forma nos ha tocado vivir durante estas últimas semanas. Pero quiero tocar la resiliencia, que es esa capacidad de poder adaptarse, pero asociada a la comunidad. Es decir, cuando la asociamos a la comunidad, pues esa capacidad por parte de las comunidades de poder detectar, de poder prevenir adversidades, de poder hacerle frente y sobre todo de poder recuperarse en un tiempo determinado. Pero es importante, una vez que eh, las personas pasan por una situación así difícil y también a los que en algún momento no les ha tocado, pero también requieren hacer una reflexión, es los cambios que tenemos que hacer como sociedad. Una vez, y la resiliencia se va construyendo en el día a día, una de estas partes que debemos tener en cuenta y reflexionar es qué podemos hacer para mejorar nuestras condiciones medioambientales como comunidad. Es cierto que necesitamos el apoyo de instituciones, pero también tenemos que ponernos a pensar qué tenemos que hacer nosotros para mejorar nuestro entorno. Si nos inundamos por una situación de residuos, bueno, nosotros tenemos que también poner de nuestra parte e inculcar en nuestras familias el valor de la limpieza y el valor también de tener en cuenta 
y a participar en lo que es la reducción también del cambio climático. Nosotros podemos aportar en eso y hay que hacer mucho hincapié. El solo hecho de, de cambiar un bombillo por un LED, ya tú estás aportando a, a, a poder mejorar este tema del cambio climático. También es importante que reflexionemos eh, sobre el consumo responsable. Toda esta campaña de reutilizar, reciclar, reducir, es importante que la vayamos incorporando y aprender de estas situaciones difíciles para que no nos sigan ocurriendo. O por lo menos que el impacto no sea tan fuerte. Otra de las cosas que se van construyendo con nuestras resiliencias también es la implantación y la preocupación que pueda tener una comunidad por los derechos humanos, por la justicia social, por el tema de la equidad, que tengamos todos pues las mismas oportunidades y también nos puede llevar a reflexionar de que podemos resolver los conflictos pues de una manera no violenta. Entonces es importante aprender después de una situación difícil, significa que hagas cambios también en tu estilo de vida y que hagas cambios en, en, y promover cambios en tu comunidad. Así que es importante, chicos, trabajar mucho la resiliencia comunitaria. Seguimos con mucho más de nuestras clases de inglés. Well, Th thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and definitely that is uh, something to think about, of course, um, and to consider. Now we continue today with our topic, and now we're talking about technology, no less than one of the greatest topics of let's say, I don't know, modern times, because technology now, I would say, is everywhere. I'm pretty sure that you guys love using the technology. I use technology every day. We all use technology every day. And thanks to technology right now, we are able to be heard. And you are you can also listen to the teacher speaking right now due to technology, of course. All right. So our learning objectives for today are Describe uh, devices. We're going to look into some devices and recognize different devices. I'm pretty sure you guys are really good at recognizing and identifying technological devices nowadays. And the success criteria is that we can describe the devices, we can write sentences using comparative and superlative, and we can also express how we use the devices, okay? Um, actually, it's not so difficult. I think we all know how to use a cell phone, right? It's quite easy, it's very easy, and if it's difficult, I think we can learn because we use them a lot. So, technology. What is technology? You have to think about that. What is technology? Technology has come to make it everything much easier for us. From long distance calls to video conference, including devices that can uh, count our steps or warn us of a possible heart attack. All that and more is offered by the new devices uh, and it will be very interesting to see what technology has in store for us uh, or in the future for us in a couple of months or years or centuries. You know, I would say that we are just starting to see what technology can give us. Okay, I would say that in a hundred years we're going to see a lot more and we're going to benefit a lot from technology. So this is definitely a great topic and something to discuss about. So, did you know, we have reached the did you know part of the day, did you know that lately artificial intelligence, also um, co known as AI, has become a very popular topic as it is intended to be implemented in the classrooms and in about 15 years we could see this become a reality. Can you imagine having a robot teaching in the classrooms? So can you imagine instead of me, you guys are having a robot? That would be very interesting, right? How would you interact with a robot? Of course, the robot needs to be, you know, some. there should be some level of consciousness so they can actually interact with a human being. That's, that's quite complex to think about, you know? So for now, we're going to go to the vocabulary of the day. So we are talking about 12 words, actually. Today we have 12 words for vocabulary. Remember, practice at home, repeat, repeat more, one time or two times or three times, as many times as possible, so you can actually pronounce it properly, okay? So let's go. I'm going to repeat them all. Laptop, tablet, headphones, Google Classroom, Zoom. Do you know what Zoom is? I'm sure you guys know what Zoom is. Everyone knows what Zoom is nowadays. Virtual reality classes. MS Teams. Google Meet. Smart Band. Device. 
flash drive or how do we call it? Uh, uh, pen drive. Pen drive right? or USB. <laughs> yeah, USB. In, in the United States, they call it flash drive, but we call it here in Latin America, we call it pen drive, but it's also a flash drive. And of course, number 12, internet or yeah, I like calling it internet. I don't like call it internet. It sounds, yeah, that's an American pronunciation, but you can choose the one that you like. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy the vocabulary and practice at home with your family members or friends. You can practice with anybody that is around you, even with your pets. That's also possible. They can hear you. All right, so now we go to the matching activity of the day. Simple. I think you know what to do here. We have five different uh, words or vocabulary, and then we have five different images right there. So we have virtual reality classes, flash drive, Google Classroom, Google Meet, and internet. And we have five images, A, B, C, D, and E, okay? So um, try to answer, take a moment, try to think, look at the images, and try to send us your answer. We're gonna be reading them. Uh, I have to read a message from our good friend Jason. He says, um, people from China, can see the most advanced technology nowadays. Well, maybe, of course, they have a lot of advanced technology. Um, definitely is one of the countries with a very, very good uh, and advanced technology. Caitlin says one is D, is that right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, number two is E. Correct. Number three, A, four, C, and five, B. Mm -hmm. What a great job answering and completing the vocabulary of today. Alrighty, so let's go to the topic explanation of the day. We're gonna go quickly and, and learn about some definitions of, and also about some devices that we have right here in our class today. So description of technological devices. We have a laptop. I think we all know what a laptop is. It's a portable device. And I'm going to read the definition for you guys. A laptop computer is a portable personal computer powered by a battery or an AC cord plugged into an electrical outlet, which is also used to charge the battery. It's very convenient if you're going from one place to another and you can use a laptop. You don't have to take your old desktop anywhere anymore. A cell phone, I think you are fully aware of what a cell phone is. It's quite easy to understand because we have been used and using them for years and then um, well I'm gonna read quickly a mobile telephone or handheld two-way communication device that you can talk on over a cellular cellular network okay that's a little complex but it's it, it's easier than you think smart TV what is a smart TV well simple it's a TV that is smart <laughs> that's it all right so it has some features that you can also find in your cell phone, okay? So it's more like interactive. You can interact a little more with your phone and you can download and use some applications in there. <coughs> now we have the e uh, AirPods. AirPods, um, well, for s maybe you don't know what this is. They are wireless Bluetooth, Bluetooth earbuds designed specifically, specifically to work with iPhones and iPads. This is a little more exclusive, you know, for the people who has um, iPhones or iPads also. iPad, it's it's like a tablet actually, but from the brand of the Apple company. So printer, we use printers. We know what it is. It's a device that accepts text and graphics output from a computer and transfer the information to paper, usually to standardized size sheets of paper and then we have them in paper we don't have them virtually anymore and scanner simply it's an output I'm sorry input device that scans documents such as photographs and pages of a text so those were some of the um, topic explanation for today we were talking about you know one of the most used devices around the planet and I think it's important to define you know what they are and how do we use them nowadays basically all right now we have a little practice if we can complete that also it's quite similar to the one that we used before so we have four in this case we have four different options 
and uh, we have to choose the right options. We have one, two, three, and four, and we have options A and B. So you simply have to look at the options and choose A or B. For example, number one, I'm gonna ask, and this is a very difficult question for you, Teacher Jose. So what do you think number one is? Number one, definitely, if I see it from far away, it's a laptop. Correct, excellent job. That is a laptop, a portable device, excellent. So take some time um, and try to answer some of these questions. We have some answers on WhatsApp. Yeah, we do have a coworker of us, Professor Anais Herrera. She's right now through WhatsApp and then she's sending regards to us and obviously her students from Escuela Multigrado, El Ciruelar de San Jose, San Francisco. So greetings to you, Professor Herrera. Thank you so much for being with us. Correct, thank you for joining the class. Uh, we send our regards. So now I would like to go quickly to the common expressions, okay? We have some common expressions in English. And I would like for you guys also to repeat them. I'm going to ask Teacher Jose to repeat the first common expressions for me, please. Yeah, it is, I listen to music. Thank you so much. I listen to music. You know, that's quite, we do that a lot. Number two is, I download videos. Number three, I share information. Number four, I upload my videos. Number five, I post pictures. I think you know very well number five. I post pictures. We can post pictures in a lot of different applications like, you know, the famous ones like Facebook and Instagram and, and uh, that's all I know. There are some others, but those are the most famous ones, I think. All right. So quickly, we're going to try to summarize comparatives and superlatives. Now we jump into grammar. Okay. So what is comparative and what is superlative i'm gonna explain i'm gonna try to explain comparative and my dear colleague here is gonna explain for you superlative okay so comparative as the word says is a comparison between two objects okay in order to do that we need adjectives okay and we need we use adjectives but we twist a little bit the adjectives. We have to add some little things to make the adjective comparative, okay? That's all we change. We change the adjective and we transform that adjective into comparative adjective. There are some exceptions that they don't follow the rules and this one, these ones, we have them right here. We have a chart and we have the exceptions. These are the irregulars, as you can see. It says irregulars because they don't follow any rules all right so in the meantime before i continue i already gave you a little idea of what is a comparison i'm going to give you an example for i would say um my cell phone is slower than teacher jose's cell phone okay i use slow and i add er to make it comparative so can you give a little description of what is superlative for sure, for those who are listening to us, I would like to introduce the grammar superlative. When we use superlative, you have to understand two things, that you could use whether it's an adjective or an adverb, and it's the adverb or adjective, the highest quality of degree of it. And when forming the superlative, we have to use two things, the article the, T-H-E, plus adding to the adjective the word est let me give you an example an example this is the best class all right so this is the highest quality or degree of an adjective in this case good the best all right so then we have the tallest all right the most expensive and interesting for those adjectives ending in I N G O U S F U L, we add the word most M O S T, the most interesting place I have ever visited, the most relaxing area, the most relaxing, whatever you want to add to that, it is just there. And then we say, um, 
uh, Boquete is the most relaxing place in Panama. So we can come up with that example for superlative. Teacher Jose? That's right. Well, thank you for the explanation. Uh, I know it sounds a little tricky, but it's simpler than you think it is. All right, we have a little assignment. So let's go to the assignment right away. Choose a technological device. I'm sorry, choose a technology device. Draw it and paint it in the box. Write down how often you use the device and how useful is this device for you, okay? So we have the little space for the image and a little space for how often do you use it and how useful it is for you. Well, time's up, guys. Thank you so much for joining the class. I'm very happy uh, as being your teacher and participating in the class. See you next Friday. Thank you so much. Stay with us for ninth grade. Síguenos en arroba nacional FM Panamá y arroba crisol FM Panamá. Conecte con la educación, entretenimiento e información con dos estaciones de radio unidas con la comunidad. Juntos lo hacemos. Nuestras cuentas de Instagram, arroba nacional FM Panamá y arroba crisol FM Panamá. Síguenos y conoce más de nuestro rol educativo, informativo y cultural de dos estaciones de radio comprometidas con el desarrollo del país. Juntos lo hacemos. El proyecto del Ministerio de Educación Conéctate con la Estrella también está en la radio. De lunes a viernes de 11 de la mañana a 12 mediodía es el turno de los chicos de primaria. Sintoniza Nacional AM y FM y Crisol. Prepárate para aprender y no quedarte sin saber porque a las 2 de la tarde se vuelven a activar para los de premedia y a las 3 para los de media. Ya lo sabes, si eres de primaria, premedia o media, esto es para ti. Conéctate con la estrella, un proyecto de Meduca. Ahora en la radio, por Nacional AM y FM, Crisol. Y por nuestras redes, Instagram Live, arroba nacional FM Panamá. Arroba Crisol FM Panamá. Facebook Live, Nacional FM, Panamá, Crisol FM Panamá. Y Twitter, arroba nacional FM y Crisol FM. Well, hello guys, this is your teacher, Jose Morillo, and thank you for joining the class today, our English Friday class. So we have great information and great topics, so we really encourage and invite you to join our class and learn some English, okay? My dear colleague right here. Hey, what's up? One, two, three, check, check. We're checking, guys, that you're learning and taking notes. This is Professor Arjona, your broadcaster. Welcome for this outstanding class. It's time for ninth graders to be taught. You will enjoy this class. I have an outstanding video and let me introduce first and let me speak about it. Uh, we do have a WhatsApp number when people participate and through the WhatsApp, our students are sending their assignments. Whether they are in high school, middle school or primary, they are really committed to learning and participating and that will pay off in the future. So I would like to present Miss um, this uh, little girl. This is a great student. She's Daniela Moran from Escuela Natividad Gordon. That's in Capira. She is in third grade and she prepared such an outstanding presentation and she would like to delight us today with this outstanding presentation. Let's have a look. Aprender geografía. Good morning, teacher. My name is Daniela Moran. Living room, dining room, bedroom, kitchen, garage, bathroom, window, yard, effect, tanks. Somos el futuro de la patria. This is the best gift teachers can get for Teacher's Day. Having the students performed their own activities and assignments and the way she did it, I mean, 
she did a joystick to that pitch and it was outstanding to to just to look at her the way she presented the topic well i have spoken too much i will have the topic later for ninth grade i will give you the clue the topic is about being healthy and improving your health but before we get into the real context of it i have mrs fernandez with her message for you guys Ok, bueno, muchas gracias a los teachers, José, contenta de estar compartiendo nuevamente con ustedes en vísperas, pues, de nuestro 28 de noviembre, el día de mañana, vamos a cumplir 199 años, y estamos contentos de hacer patria, pues, de alguna forma, llevándoles mensajes positivos y aprendizajes, que es lo más importante, nuestra educación siempre tiene que ser lo primero. Chicos, vamos a continuar con nuestro tema de la semana, que es la resiliencia, pero quiero compartir un poquito con ustedes algunas opciones o primeros auxilios que le podemos ofrecer a las personas en algún momento dado, cuando nos podamos estar envueltos en alguna situación difícil. No necesariamente tienen, tienen que ser psicólogos, pero pueden ser personas que en algún momento dado tomen en cuenta estos tips para poder ayudar a otras personas que estén pasando por una situación difícil. Vamos a ver, estos primeros auxilios psicológicos son una herramienta muy útil para afrontar de una manera correcta lo que pueden ser experiencias traumáticas. Su objetivo, por un lado, es proporcionar apoyo, que la persona se sienta escuchada, que se sienta comprendida, que podamos facilitarle, no cohibirle la expresión de sus sentimientos o sus emociones, sino facilitar que lo haga, como la tristeza, el miedo que pueda sentir en algún momento. Otro de los objetivos es también reducir la mortalidad. ¿En qué sentido? Si hay riñas, si hay discusiones. Tratar de, eh, de poder enfocar a que no se agrave más la situación. Y también ayudan estos primeros auxilios a ir conectando las ayudas que se requieran o poder darle esa orientación en algún momento dado de lo que va a necesitar o va a requerir. En estos primeros auxilios psicológicos quiero contarles aspectos fundamentales. Son cinco principales. Uno de ellos es contener a la persona. De alguna manera, si está pasando por una situación, está expresando sus emociones, intervenir en ello, tratando de aislarlo o que lo exprese por en un lugar donde se sienta un poquito más cómodo. Calmar. Definitivamente que ese es un primer paso. De alguna manera llevarlo a que se pueda relajar, a que pueda expresar lo que siente, pero no alterarlo más o no decirle cosas, sino al contrario, que se pueda tranquilizar. Otro aspecto importante en estos primeros auxilios es informar, informar de manera objetiva, no masificar la información y minimizarla, sino ser concreto y directo en la información que se le pueda dar realista. Otro aspecto es normalizar, validar que se sienta de esa manera, que se sienta triste, que se sienta agobiado, validarle, pero que en algún momento eso de alguna forma va a ir pasando y está el tema también pues, de poder consolar. En ese momento las personas lo que necesitan es ser escuchadas, ser apoyadas y no ser juzgadas. Otros de los mecanismos de afrontamiento que son adaptativos y que son positivos, por ejemplo, pueden ser hablar con otra persona que, que se sienta apoyada, no que se cohiba, sino que pueda tener ese contacto con las personas que son de, de su cariño, eh, conseguir información necesaria, ejecutar actividades positivas, como ya sea eh, poder relajarse, yoga, meditación, algún hobby que le guste, eso también es importante. Pasa a veces con los niños que uno juzga que porque están jugando, si está pasando una situación difícil, bueno, al contrario, es mejor que lo hagan. Eh, también decirse a uno mismo que es natural sentirse así, también tratar de comer saludable y tener un estilo de vida saludable y en algún momento dado pues también buscar apoyo psicológico si sientes que la situación no la puedes manejar. Recuerden las líneas telefónicas que aparecen en pantalla eh, para las atenciones, si te sientes abrumado puedes apoyarte con tus padres, con tus docentes, con tus orientadores o si no con el gabinete psicopedagógico porque estamos para ayudarte, estamos de lunes a viernes en un horario de 8 a 3 y 30. Bueno, profe, seguimos con mucho más. Great. Teacher Jose, let us start greeting those on Instagram. Who's there? Let's see who's still there participating. So you can greet these people, teacher. Yeah, we have, uh, like, as usual, the students are connecting and listening to our classes. Uh, we have uh, 1707, Yarelis, Luzmin, and Marlene also connecting here. here. Excellent. Great. Our topic for, uh, this is a, a great that I like. It's ninth grade, our graduates, they are graduating this year from ninth grade. I mean, that stage of middle school is not going to be there anymore. You are moving to high school. And this is a good topic for you, improving health. This is the topic for today. The learning objective for this class is to demonstrate the importance of good quality of life by uh, protecting our health, number one. Number two, to describe good habits to prevent illnesses or diseases, you guys name it. The success criteria is that you will be able to provide uh, ideas about how to improve uh, your health. And also you can 
demonstrate the way you guys improve your health or how could you do it by writing a paragraph and using the uh, the modern auxiliary should to give suggestion to advise other people or even to make some recommendations out there especially to give advice and to suggest other people you know the way they should do all right so improving health let us examine and let us analyze a little bit the information improving health sometimes it is necessary to make some changes in our daily habits to improve our health in this topic we are going to develop important facts that will help us in this matter how now i would like to ask you what do you do guys to improve your health you could participate by sending your responses what do you do to improve your health uh and in the meantime i'm gonna introduce vocabulary for you all number one it's improve number two disease number three depression number four stroke stroke is number four number five injuries number six is sleeping number seven practicing sports and number eight eating on time it is important to eat on time we're going to be waiting for those responses on instagram teacher jose is working on that right now and for those who are uh, listening to us you can take your notebook and write some responses what do you do guys to improve your health one way to do it it's by dancing i mean do you love dancing it is great so i mean uh opening with this statement i would like to introduce our second video from the ministry of education the department of coordination nacional de cultura this culture is important to have it in our nation it's our background for the culture and dancing this catchy song can help us to improve our health this song is called la coca leca so let's listen to these uh outstanding students who are going to present it L uh, have a look at el momento de aprender geografía es la coca leca la alegre tamborera con su dulce ritmo alegra el alma entera vamos a la playa que ya es de madrugada vamos en carreta cantando esta tonada quiero coca leca dame coca leca vamos a la playa que la mar está seca quiero coca leca dame coca leca vamos a la playa que la mar está seca guarare 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 yo me voy pa guarare 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 yo me voy pa guarare 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 yo me voy pa guarare 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 mecate somos el futuro de la patria language is getting across the nations and this is part of culture and we want to excel and congratulate these outstanding students with their teachers who prepared this awesome video i was about to stand up and dance here it was a very catchy song and excellent it excels our custom traditions in panama and we offer that to so many people teacher jose one way to improve health is by dancing right so with right. this catchy song, I mean, everyone, everybody wants to, to dance and enjoy. Now, let us continue with the topic. Teacher Jose will introduce the match and the next activities. Correct. Uh, definitely great videos. We have some comments from our students on Instagram. And they are saying uh, that uh, 1707 says, I think we should eat less junk food. Jason says, uh, we should eat a lot, a lot of vegetables and fruits and also drinking eight glasses of water daily and uh anna lorena says um i should eat more vegetables that's great congratulations those students did a great job on those so definitely yeah of course we need to eat more vegetables less young food and drink more water and that would de increasingly uh improve our life in a, in, a, in so many aspects so 
We have our matching activity of today. It's a quite simple matching. We have five words and five images, and we're gonna to simply match them, okay? So what is number one? Injuries, I'm gonna read the vocabulary for you. Injuries, disease, stroke, depression, and eating on time. So look at, take a look at the images and see um, which one correspond to which one, all right? So in the meantime, we're gonna go on and um, let's go to the part it's another practice activity that we have in here. But before that, we're going to go to the topic explanation, all right? So we have the topic explanation. I'm going to read it for you, and I want you to pay attention to this, all right? So good health can decrease your risk of developing health problems. These include heart disease, stroke, stomach ache, and injuries, okay? So as simple as having a good health and both but of course how do i improve my health by doing exercises drinking plenty of water um eating healthy of course which is the topic of today we need to eat healthy and uh including more vegetables in our diet would definitely improve our way of living okay so we have a little practice activity we have to write five sentences with each one of the following words. We have improve, disease, depression, stroke, and risk. So I'm gonna help you with number one. I'm gonna give you a sentence using improve. Okay, so um, eating vegetables, I'm, sure, I'm gonna use one of the examples that you wrote on, on Instagram. Eating vegetables improve your life. Is an example. Eating vegetables uh, improve your life. So you can write a sentence with um, disease, write a sentence with depression, one with stroke, and one with risk. Okay? Take a moment, try to answer them. In the meantime, I'm going to read some of the answers that we already have from, for example, JSOL and 1707. They say 1C and 4A, 5B. That is correct. That is exactly. Thank you guys for joining and answering these questions. Yes, it's Jose. Yeah, teacher, we have the WhatsApp uh, a greeting uh, for um, a stu a, a students from Loma Grande School from fifth grade. It, it, they said, teachers, God bless you and take care of you. Thank you for the class. And they're writing from the province of Cocle. Corregimiento Chiguri Arriba. Thank you so much for those students in Escuela Loma Grande in La Provincia de Cocle. Thank you so much. Thank you for the message. I'm seeing you here and I would like to take a look at the grammar structure of today, which is um, the use of should. All right. So please, let's go quickly and take a look at the grammar structure of today, which is should. So should is a modal verb that we mainly use to provide or give recommendation okay so when we give recommendations or advice we use should for example you should eat more vegetables okay you should eat more vegetables as a recommendation okay so it's important when we're giving advice of recommendation to use the modal verb should it's important to highlight also that we do not use to. It's not necessary to use to with any of the modal verbs except from ought to, oughta, which is another one similar to should. Okay? So we often use should when we are offering advice or opinion and it's similar to oughta. But like I said, we don't need to use the word to with the modal verb should. Okay? So let's give it a little practice. This is quite easy for you. I'm sure. I'm sure. So in the first image, we see a girl and she's having a hamburger, a huge, delicious hamburger. So Diana should eat healthy food or Diana, sh or D Diana, if you want to say it in English, shouldn't. We have to complete using should or shouldn't. Take a moment and try to um, answer. And uh, we have an example. I should have more participation in classes, says 1707. You're right about that. Not, I mean, you must. Let me change that. You must. All right. Very good, 1707. Thank you for that example. Very accurate 
and interesting. All right, um, the diseases, uh, JSOP, yes, okay. So um, for the assignment, let's go quickly for the assignment. We are running out of time. So for the assignment of today, we have to write 10 sentences to improve our health habits, right? Use capital letters, remember that. Apply and uh, use the given structure and learn the vocabulary when needed, use it. And don't forget to draw or paste a picture to all these three the sentences of today. Well, time is up. Thank you so much, guys, for today's class. We are very glad and very happy that we have you here. I hope to see you next week again. And thank you for joining our classes, Teacher Jose. Yeah, I want to congratulate those viewers and those who are listening to us today. It has been the best day ever. I mean, we have enjoyed having you here. All of you did an outstanding job. And this is it. I mean, these are the results that we really want to have and to show on you guys. And thank you so much for your participation. Wishing you all a tremendous weekend. Take care. Con la visión de fortalecer la participación de los padres de familia y los integrantes de la comunidad educativa escolar y regional, el Ministerio de Educación, en alianza con las emisoras comprometidos con la fortaleza.